Hello flame people, in this tutorial I'm going to tell you how to transform a still photo into a 3D scene and make a 3D camera movement. I'll be using perspective grid, 3D shapes that are extruded from G-masks and projection mapping. I'll be generating some clean plates. I'm going to basically model the environment. Let's get started. Attach this photo to the background of an action node. Switch to action schematic view and add a perspective grid. Position the corners on a rectangular area on the wall. Get closer to the image and adjust the corners and position them precisely. Bottom line of the perspective grid should be aligned with the floor line. Attach a 3D shape to the perspective grid, delete its default G-mask and attach a rectangular G-mask. Select top vertices of this mask and move them along Y-axis until you align the line with the ceiling. Select bottom vertices and move them along y-axis until you align the edge with the floor. Duplicate this shape, reattach it to the perspective grid again, rotate it in x-axis minus 90 degrees. Move this shape along y-axis to the below, Align the sideline with this vertex. I'm going to add a control axis to the top of the hierarchy. I'm going to animate all scene elements with this axis. By rotating this axis, you can check if the bottom plane is well aligned with the corner vertex or not. Reset the ro rotations. Duplicate this 3D shape and reconnect it to the perspective grid again. Rotate it 90 degrees this time in X axis. Move the 3D shape along the Y axis until you align the edge with this vertex. By rotating all geometries together, by using the control axis, you can check the alignment. Reset the rotations. I'd like to make these geometries transparent. Attach a comp node to the action node to blend it with our photo. With a transparency value of 30. Assign context 2 to comp node and assign context 1 to the photo. Pressing space 1 shows us the photo. Press space 2 to see the mixture of the action node with the starting image. Add a light node to the scene to enable shading. Context 2 now shows a result with shading and transparency. Rename these three geometries as wall, floor and ceiling. Select two vertices of the G-mask and move them along the Y-axis. Select two vertices of the ceiling and move them along the y-axis again. Move them closer to the camera. I am not sure about the bottom left corner of the perspective grid because it is hidden behind the escalator.
change the position of the corner along x x axis until you align the bottom line with the stairs and the top line with the ceiling. Get closer to the picture and reposition this corner until this line gets parallel with the stairs. Slide the vertices to cover the image. Slide this edge and make it parallel with the ceiling line. Extend 3D shapes by sliding vertices until you cover the image. Hide the perspective grid. It is taking too much attention. I am going to draw a G-mask to model the left side of the escalator. Select perspective grid and attach a 3D shape. I am not going to delete the default G-mask attached because I am going to draw a freehand G-mask. The bottom line of this shape should be aligned with the ground line. Get closer to the image and adjust the vertices more precisely. I assume that this side of the escalator is parallel and attached to the wall. I'll use a basic model for this tutorial. When viewing the result of the action, extrude the shape along the camera axis, selecting front as the direction of the extrusion. View the result of context 2, extrude it until it meets with the bottom line. I'm adjusting the G mask a little bit more. Rename the geometry as escalator left. Duplicate it and attach it to the perspective grid. Drag it along the Z axis and bring it closer to the camera. By weaving on text two, Slip the object. The bottom line of the object should be aligned with this line. Change the thickness of the object. I covered mostly all the photo with 3D objects. Now I'm going to add stairs to the scene. Add a 3D shape to the perspective grid. Delete its default G mask and draw a rectangular G-mask to the wall. Extrude it in front direction along the camera axis. Reposition it until it's aligned with the ground. Now it is parallel with the ground line. Move it to the left. Align the bottom line of the object with the corner of floor and the stairs. Adjust the height of the object by moving its vertices downwards. I'm going to duplicate and make instances of this step. Rename this node as stairs. Drag a replica node and attach it in between two nodes. Increase the count to 2. Slide it in X and Y until you align it with the picture.
increase the number to 10. You can adjust them until you align the stairs much better. I am going to project the photo onto these geometries. Select the first geometry and add a diffuse map to it. Attach this diffuse map to all geometries by holding Alt and Shift. Duplicate the camera and rename it as X. Attach the projector to the control axis. I'm going to animate projector X and the geometries together with this control axis. This is the projector. This is default or result camera. It is static and we see the result through it by pressing F4. Go to the diffuse map and change its projection type from wrap to projection. Select X as the projector. Disable shading. From the control axis you can animate the scene. We are projecting the same image to multiple geometries. We can see the ceiling on the wall geometry. I'm going to project a different image to the wall. I'm going to retouch the ceiling outside of action. Add a GMask tracer node and draw a GMask covering the ceiling. Add a pixel spread node and feed its alpha input with the mask you draw. Select st spread type as stretch, increase the amount. Select the spread mode from expansion to contraction. Increase the amount until you cover the ceiling. Add a blur node and feed it with the same mat. Enable use mat and blur the stretch part. Now I deleted the ceiling roughly. Add a max node and freeze it. Add this as a layer to the action. Delete the default added one. Disconnect the diffuse map from the wall geometry. Duplicate it and reattach this to the wall again. Now we have a separate map for the wall geometry. Apply layer 1 to this texture. Now the wall has its own mapping. We have a separate texture mapped on the wall. I can retouch another image and project it on the left side of the geometry of the escalator. I'll do the similar cleaning. I'm going to stretch the pixels to this side. Stretch the pixels. Blur them the same way as we did before. Add 
added to the action as a new layer and freeze it by a max node. You can delete, delete the default one. Disconnect the map from escalator left geometry. Now we have no texture projected onto this geometry. Duplicate the projection mapping texture and connect it to the escalator left. Now we have a separate map for this geometry. Apply layer 2 to this map. We have a cleaned plate for the geometry now. I'm going to animate the scene, entering keyframes to the control axis. This is the render result.